I'm Debbie Ross with the BBC News. Hello. South Korea's President Yoon San Yeol felt he will expand his country's humanitarian and non-lethal military support to Ukraine. Speaking on a surprise visit to Kiev, Mr. Yoon said Seoul would continue to supply bulletproof vests and helmets. But there was no sign of a change in policy to allow the provision of ammunition and heavy weapons as Ukraine and its allies have long called for. Here's our diplomatic correspondent, James Landale. I think having a country like South Korea visit Ukraine, I think it's the first time ever that a South Korean leader has ever been to Ukraine, is significant because essentially the message is, look, South Korea of all countries is concerned about the threat to its territorial integrity to a neighbor, they have something in common with Ukraine uh, and the Russian situation. So I think diplomatically, it is symbolically significant. Unprecedented heat waves are plaguing many countries around the world. Nearly a third of Americans are under extreme advisory. The National Weather Service there has warned that scorching temperatures in Western could be deadly to anyone without effective cooling or hydration. Temperatures are nearing record levels. Earth is experiencing much of the same. With more details, is the BBC weather presenter, Sarah Keith-Lucas. Generally, the, the highest temperatures this time of year, probably not until about three or four o'clock in the afternoon. So actually gradually warming up through the morning, peaking from about lunchtime to the middle of the afternoon, and then not dropping off in a hurry actually overnight as well. That's something we've seen with this warm air mass in place, but temperatures are staying you know, close to 30 degrees or even higher than that across the southwestern United States overnight as well. Not much respite from the daytime heat, really. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been taken to hospital after feeling unwell. His office says initial tests have found nothing out of the ordinary, with the preliminary assessment being that he's been hydrated. Last October, the 73-year-old was also sent to hospital after feeling ill during prayers at a synagogue. Tennis and Marquesa Vondrosheva has won Wimbledon, becoming the first unseeded player to win the women's singles title in the professional era. The 24-year-old from the Czech Republic beat Tunisia's on Jabir 6-4. Jabir was the last runner-up for the second successive year. She's been to become the first Arab or African woman to win a Grand Slam title. Tessa Partick was watching the match. Heartbreak for on the ship, uh, but what a story for Marketa von Drosheva, the world number 42, the first unseeded champion in the history of the women's singles here at Wimbledon. She has come out of nowhere to win this title. 6 4, 6 4. It was a match where momentum shifted from one to the other. Lots of breaks of serve, but it was von Drosheva managed to keep hold of her nerves far better than Jabba. World News from the BBC. Rescue workers in South Korea are scrambling to reach people trapped inside their cars, submerged in an underground tunnel in the central Chungcheong region. One person is reported to have died, and at least nine have been rescued so far. Floods and landslides caused by torrential rain have killed more than 20 people over the last three days. Representatives of Sudan's army have returned to Jeddah in Saudi Arabia for peace talks. Their paramilitary rivals, the Rapid Support Forces, have not confirmed if they'll rejoin the negotiations which Saudi and U.S. mediators adjourned last month after numerous ceasefires were violated. Last week, the army boycotted separate negotiations in Ethiopia, hosted by the East African Regional Bloc. The man who'd been expected to burn a Torah and a Bible in Stockholm has not carried out the threatened act. He arrived at the site near the Israeli embassy where he'd been given permission to carry out a demonstration but said no holy books should be burned and condemned the way a copy of the Quran had been set on fire in the city last month. Speaking to reporters, the man, identified only as Ahmed, said his intention had been to highlight the need to respect all religions. I wanted to show that we have to respect each other, that we live in the same society. If I burn the Torah, someone else the Bible, someone else the Quran, there will be war here. What I wanted to show is that it's not right to do that. The late Silvio Berlusconi has chosen the foreign minister, Alessandro Tajani, as new leader. The centre-right party dominated Italian politics for much of the 90s and early 2000s. First, it's been at support weighing to below 10%. It's now one of the junior partners in the current far-right-led government. And that's the latest BBC News. 
on radio, online and on mobile. This is Sports World on the BBC World Service. 